when they go home, they talk about it with their family. When they go to work, they talk about it with their coworkers. When they're hanging out with their friends, they're talking about it with their friends. That to me means the ultimate automotive experience. Welcome everyone to the Driving Vision Podcast brought to you by the Ziegler Auto Group. And here with me, Auto Group Director of Talent Development, Mike Van Ryan. Welcome, Mike. Hey, thanks, Sam. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast, like it if you do, and leave a comment. Hey, everybody. Last week, we highlighted the Ziegler Auto Group's decade-long domination of a national recognition, the best and brightest companies to work for in the Chicagoland. Well, today we turn north to Wisconsin, where Ziegler's four stores there continue that tradition, earning the recognition both years they have qualified. Then we turn to Indiana and Ziegler's Subaru Merrillville to learn about how that store is helping a charity drive vision chasing dreams. But first, we turn to the team at Ziegler Honda of Racine. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Future of Zag Today podcast. Team Ziegler, we're here at the locker room at Honda Racine, Lindsay Latsko. Yes. Yes. Who are we here with, Matt Davikas? Tell us who we have going around the table. We're here with our, our famous uh, service director, Brian Ingram, our parts director and warehouse director, uh, Victor Vasquez and our general sales manager, James King. So Matt, I was just talking how it's interesting. I do the daily ranking with e-leads that get sent out to the entire team every single day. It's not just one day. It's not just two days. Team Ziegler Honda Racine has created a tradition of excellence day in, day out in unit count, execution of process and everything else. And part of what we're here to talk about is Wisconsin winning best and brightest. It made sense to come here. We have four stores. You guys are doing a great job. All four stores are doing a great job, but it's fun to see you guys sitting there at the top of the list. So Matt Devikas, the first question today in the podcast is the question we start out every podcast with, which is vision in business and leadership literally changes the world. Kennedy took us there with space. Other leaders have taken us and, and, and America to different places. What is your vision? of a better world in the car business and how are you driving towards that vision? Uh, you know, it's the simplicity of just kiss. Keep it simple, stupid, you know, give that. a great experience, give a great experience to your employees first and foremost, and they'll give a great experience to our customers. And when you do all that, you see the success from all that. So just giving, treating people how you want to be treated and just giving that, that world-class experience we talk about, not only to the customers, mainly to our employees. So here's what's interesting is whether you're part of Team Ziggler or you're our external audience listening today, you've heard and seen and you can experience it for yourself. You walk into Honda here in Racine, Wisconsin. And what happens, Lindsay? They open the door for you. They welcome you immediately. Why do you do that, James? Um, it's all about the amazing experience. It's part of branding for us. And like Aaron always say, it's a competitive advantage for us as well. So when I say uh, part of our mission statement of the Ziegler Auto Group is our family providing your family the ultimate automotive experience. And this is open to anybody. When you think about that ultimate automotive experience, what does that mean to you? It, to me, it means that, you know, when they when they leave here, they want to talk about what just happened. Yeah. And that to me is an ultimate experience. I love that. When when they go home, they talk about it with their family. When they when they go to work, they talk about it with their coworkers. When they're hanging out with their friends, they're talking about it with their friends. That to me means the ultimate automotive experience. When they talk about it with other people. Listen, service departments. <laughs> that doesn't apply to service, does it? Nobody talks about their experience in service. Absolutely not. Uh, only <laughs> if it's bad, right? Yeah. So we want to change that culture here. And that's what we do. Okay. How are you doing that? Uh, we just make sure that we're just treating them like they're they're one of our guests in our, in our home. Um, the meeting and greeting them at the car, making sure that they feel welcome, you know, take the nerves away away from the the environment, uh, making sure that we're covering the cars up with with bags and plastics and make sure that's nice and safe for them. Uh, when they leave, make sure that we're escorting them to their vehicles, make sure there's a fresh bottle of water in the car and thanking them for their business and welcome them back again. So what thought went into creating this experience? So you described some very deliberate things that are a result of a commitment to a system not only a, a, a vision and a mission statement, but a system. Mm -hmm. So as as you went from one ownership to Ziegler a couple of years ago in service, how did you go about creating these processes that create this experience? Well, this has always been a, a people business, right? We're yeah. in the car business, but it's a people business. So, you know, I'd like to take credit for it myself, but unfortunately it was just a great, uh, great Matt DeBicus that uh, instilled all these here. Sorry. We started way back before we were Ziegler and we yeah. just ramped it up 10 notches after we became Ziegler because it starts from the top, starts with Aaron and kind of works its way down and filters to everybody here in the store. Yeah. So it's interesting. You say it's the car business. 
but it's not the car business everywhere. And especially when we think about parts and service, right? In parts, okay. we're in an era of part shortage. It's tough to find parts. I was at another store where they're delivering four trucks without major components. So we often talk on the podcast about success isn't about resources. It's about being resourceful and how we connect with the customer. So Matt, in an era of shortages and in an era of, it would be a lot easier to make excuses about why we can't surround the customer with excellence. Mm -hmm. How, what caused you to pursue this? Um, well, first of all, let's just talk about communicating with our customers. You know, we have, we have shortage shortages and we have other things that hit us. We had the pandemic, we had the chip shortage, we had part shortages, but at the end of the day, it's communicating with our customers, still giving them that great experience. And how do you give a great experience is by being transparent yeah, and, and letting them know and just keeping in touch with them, you know, step by step and letting them know if their part's going to be delayed and how long, um, trying to provide them with, uh, another vehicle. We have more loaners in our loaner service for a long time during the, the chip shortage yeah. than we ever did just to make sure our customers had a great experience and felt safe on the road. Yeah. So yeah, I think communicating it with anything in life is, is a key factor to anybody's success. So James, as you think of that ultimate automotive experience, what element of that experience do you think separates this store where we sit today from everyone else in the, in the industry? Yeah, that's a great question, Sam. The main differentiator is our pride statements from Ziegler, the acronym PRIDE, passion, reputation, integrity, drive, and execution. We take that personal and uh, we execute that every day with our clients. So it's something that would resonate with us differently. I believe it's the main differentiator, the pride statements. That's awesome. You started at Ziegler at another store, at Chrysler Schaumburg, a That's great right. store. You That's learned right. from some of the greatest, Eric Johnson, right. and certainly Joe St. Germain. Yes. What was something you brought from your past here, a strength, and you brought it and helped to contribute to creating that ultimate experience here at Honda? Being relentless. One thing I learned from Joe and Eric and all the guys in my past, um, still in my present because Joe is still over the store as well, being relentless and not giving up and just keep going, giving 120% every day uh, with our clients and uh, customer interaction, employee interaction, but given 120% every single day intentionally, I think that's a big differentiator and one of the biggest lessons I learned from those guys. That's awesome. So any system or process that creates a, a great experience starts with habits, right? What would you, and this is open to anybody, what would you say are some of the most important habits or rituals or routines that you have here at the Honda store that help create that ultimate experience, which ultimately led to the best and brightest award, man. You know, we've always we've always start our day with our meetings, yeah. and and letting our team know you know what what happened, where we're going, and we're doing it in service as well uh, every morning. And then we do our all store meeting every month. And we recognize our two top employees, either from fixed or from from variable, from sales, and we recognize them going above and beyond and what they did aside from their job responsibilities. But what do they do to create a better experience for either one of their coworkers yeah. or a customer? So you have them share that in the Abs absolutely yeah. because it's interesting when you say. Hey, what's the ritual? And you say, well, we start the day with a meeting. Right. Well, to me, a meeting is a terrible thing, right? It doesn't even sound that exciting. It's not. But I've been in your meetings. I know that they're very different. So how would you describe the difference that creates that energy and excitement to an ability to engage with the customer? It's a it's a locker room meeting. It's really uh, you know, yeah, we talk about a few things, then we just we hit them with everything we have. We just we pump them with energy, some motivational um the motivational word of the day. James and I always talk for if if I can't make it at Honda, we're talking. What's the word of the day today? Yeah, and then he, we 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 share ideas, and then he executes here. I execute at Lincolnwood. So it. Um, J James, what's a good recent word of the day that stands out to you, and why? Faith. Love it. What faith. does that mean? Uh, so we talk about the difference between belief and faith. Belief is a state of mind. Faith is action. Believing it's yours. But faith means action. So you take action on the things you believe in. That's when you have faith. So take action. I love that thought. And actually, Tony Robbins talks a lot about that. Yes. It's not, it's the four letter F word. Actually, it's five letter F word. It's a five letter F word, right? Uh, and it, it doesn't have to be a religious. It, it's a hope, right? How does that faith drive you when we think about business? Uh, when we think about business, it comes down to accomplishments. We all have goals we have to accomplish. We have quotas we have to reach. And we have faith we're going to crush our goals. I love that. Because if you don't have that basic belief when you're attacking a goal, what's the point? You, you're not going to totally devote yourself. Fair? How does... How does that apply to service? Big picture. Everything's big picture. It's not where we've been, it's where we're about to go. Yeah. Um, and knowing that we're going to get there and we have the people in place that are going to bring us there. So just keep the drive going. Yeah. Now it's interesting. About a year and a half ago, as we sit in this room, Lindsay, a big event happened. Uh, and in fact, I was part of a similar conversation day before yesterday across the Ziegler Auto Group. Oftentimes we'll go out and we'll buy stores. 
one of our largest acquisitions ever was the acquisitions of these stores, four stores in Wisconsin, Toyota, Hyundai, Honda, Subaru. And I remember that day, Matt Tavikas. Do you remember? <laughs> I remember that day when we all walked in Ooh, with do. our team, which is part of the family. Do you remember do. this? Yes. Yeah, I was there. And it's like, hey, we're going to have a conversation about a change that's that's going to happen. Tell us about that day, Matt. You know, I, I, I still share the same story. Mm-hmm. You know, in the beginning, when Ziggler first took took over, it just felt, it didn't feel real. It felt like, okay, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors going on. I kept my guard up, you know, then another month went by and it got a little bit better. So, and, so for the external audience, who owned this auto group prior? Home Run Auto Group. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you're moving along. Life is good. You're selling cars. You've got a business. You've got a world. Yeah. Things are running We're well. number one in Home Run Auto Group out of 27 facilities. Super big, big pride over that, right? Yeah. Yep. And then you get a that. phone call one day and how'd that call go? And it it was shocking to be honest with you. Who called you first? Uh, well, or did you hear it by rumor first? No, actually, I heard it from the uh, the the previous owner. Told me that I'll be expecting a phone call from uh, Aaron Ziegler, and I was in shock. I didn't I didn't see it coming, and uh, I was in disbelief. And then when I met Aaron Ziegler and the team, Joe Saint Germain, Dan Scheid, for the first time, I didn't give him my best impression because I was still in. I was still, well, sh- I was still in shock. You're frustrated. You're upset because oh, your history that you thought was secured absolutely. all of a sudden changed. Absolutely. Who moved my cheese. Right. <laughs> right. There, right. Right. Uh, you know, and, and and when Aaron came in with the team, uh, he promised all these great things. I'm like, oh, yeah, I like to see it. And not only did they come through, they went above and beyond. And uh, the support so, that we get is amazing. So, for those who may go through that same experience now and into the future, because certainly as an auto group, we continue to grow. What's one thing that, that the auto group said that to you in that moment of change seemed improbable and unlikely, right? Because in the car business, we hear a lot of promises. Mm-hmm, and, and and integrity is the ability to make a promise mm-hmm. and deliver on a promise. I'll tell you what, Aaron, that's rare. I'll tell you what Aaron told me. He okay. said, Matt, he goes, give me 90 days. And if I'm not everything that I'm telling you right now, yeah. He goes, we could part ways, but give me 90 days. Yeah. And uh and to your credit, by the way, you swallowed your pride. I did. And was I'm, that hard? It was hard for me. Yeah, it was really hard for me. But I'll be honest, it was because <laughs> I was probably by the way, for anybody <laughs> questioning, Matt is very uncomfortable right now, right? We're on a podcast, so some people can't see the video, but he's squirming, right? Yeah, a little bit. A little <laughs> yeah. bit. Yeah. Uh no, um, but you know, he came through and I'm glad I I, I took the 90 days. It's been life changing for me. So. Yeah. In what way? As soon as you think you, you've you done it all or seen it all, and now you get challenged by a bigger group, bigger thinking, continuous training, you really realize how small you were yeah. and your potential is so much greater. Yeah. So uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Sometimes we don't think big enough. Right. That can be a flaw. So in service, that's a big change, right? It's a huge change. We went from basically 12 racks to, to 28 plus racks. I mean, the, the building's about four times the size. I mean, everything was huge, yeah. you know, so, you know, we're still growing, you know, we're not even there yet, you know, so we're still, still moving the needle. In the moment, how, what was that change like for you? I was excited to be honest with you because we were stepping over ourselves at the last dealership. I mean, we we needed more space land to grow, you know. Yeah. I mean, the from the parking lot to the to where we were located at, I mean, everything was yeah. just small potatoes. We needed it. I was looking forward to it. Yeah. We had the horses together and to, to make a difference. And you know, Ziggler brought it to us. So what is it about change? What is it about human nature and change that makes change so difficult? especially in the car business, James, James, why, why do we, even though, you know, Damon West talked about, we make the, we meet the best version of ourselves on the other side of adversity. What does that mean to you, James? Yeah, well, most people get complacent because we get comfortable with our current situation, but growth and change is the only way you can get to the top. So if you want to go to the next level, you have to be open to change because the world is always changing in front of us. And we talk about it in our meetings every day. We have to pivot. We have to pivot, and that's the biggest part of innovation is pivoting. So it's interesting. We often talk on the podcast about how we can either be forced to change, evolve, and become better, or we can choose to do it. And I think one of the things that separates you from any other auto business on the planet is you somehow have adopted this ability to do it by choice. Is Talk to us about that, Matt. Am I on the right track or is that crazy? No, you're on the right track. I, I'm one that, for me, it's never enough. And, you know, my wife keeps saying, Matt, when's it, when's it enough? I yeah. said, the day it's enough, 
for me is the day I got to hang my hat. Yeah, I'm just curious if you lied to her when you answered that question. Did you say, here, I'm going to tell you the answer. Is, no. Or did you say that? You know, that's the day I have to hang my hat. When I get, when I, when I'm bored, I, I become complacent. I get bored. I get bored. I get depressed. So I have to keep myself busy. I have to keep thinking outside the box and what, you know, how am I going to grow, yeah. you know, us again? How am I going to redevelop Mantavikas? How am I going to redevelop the people around me? You know, we have social media today. That's a, just, a, if you don't know social media today, you're just a dinosaur, Yeah. you know? So, but redeveloping these old, these old dogs into a new game. Yeah. And that's my job as a leader and a coach and a mentor is yeah. to help them and elevate them to that level. You know, let's talk about social media for just a minute. When we think about like evolving and challenging ourselves, meeting a better version of ourselves on the other side. As an auto group, we ventured into social media. You make mistakes in social yeah. media. You learn things that you do right, you do wrong, and then you have to pivot. In the car business, we don't like to make mistakes. So Lindsay, this is a great question for you because because <laughs> you had up so much of our social. Why is it okay to make some mistakes to learn and grow? Well, because you're, you're trying new things and you're not going to grow without trying new things and seeing what works and what doesn't. And you're going to do some things that, you know, are super successful and you're going to do some things where you fail. And I mean, just even like thinking social media, you know, we have really jumped on like the TikTok train for a yes, while. Yeah, now, right. Dollars nationally for it, right? Yes. Yeah. And so we were trying to do all these trends and, you know, keep up with that. And, and we did a really great job across the auto group, but some of them, you know, maybe weren't appropriate well, completely or completely inappropriate. Yes, yes. Yeah. And so it's like, that's a mistake. And then you had to fail. call people up and say, wait, you can't, you can't show <laughs> you can't the picture of the car that. on the whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but again, that's just us trying new things and getting out there. And if we hadn't done that, you know, just like you said, we got mentioned nationally, we've had vendors come, uh, you know, open up to us and say, yeah, we saw you guys all over TikTok and, you know, stores from Michigan to Wisconsin everywhere. So, um, we just have to try new things. Matt, your take on mistakes. Well, here, you know, mistakes, make them, learn from them, don't repeat them. And I think the, the thing with social media is it's either a knowing thing or a doing thing, right? Mm -hmm. So if, we, if, we, if we're teaching them how to do it, then it's, it's a doing thing. When I ask the majority of the people out there, why aren't you doing it? There's a fear thing. There's a fear factor in there. And um, people are, are fearful of what comments are going to be made. Yeah. And I always tell people, you know, uh, haters are going to hate. Oh, yeah. And if you don't have haters, you're not doing something right. Yeah. You know, so I mean, when you're growing at leaps and bounds from your com competitors, you're going to have haters out there. Yeah. And that's normal. Yeah. So don't let that discourage you. Just keep pushing forward. And by the way, like we talked about a little bit earlier today, Grant Cardone talks about if you're going to have a big goal and you create new goals, it's going to create new problems. And the challenge, whether it's by mistake or whether it's coming up with a way to solve those new problems as you continue to grow and being okay with that, right? Mm -hmm. Right. How does how do how does that impact parts? How does that affect your world? Like parts right now, <laughs> about the shortage. Yeah, it's going above and beyond and trying to find that part, giving other avenues to find. Yeah, and stuff like that. So that's the action. What's an example of finding another avenue for a customer in, well, in the part shortage? Well, put it on a locator. I mean, even if you have to get it from California and they're willing to sell it to you, yeah, then mm -hmm. you have to do it. You have to yeah. get the part. You yeah, know? so you go Here's find it. We've called 50 dealers at one yeah. time because they're on the list. And a lot of people with back order parts, they're not going to want to sell them. Yeah. So sometimes we'll even have like one of our guys call not acting from Ziegler Honda as a normal customer. Yeah. Because if you call me and I got a back order part that I have in stock, I may not sell it to another Honda dealer because I know it's a back order. Yeah. But if I get Brian Ingram to pull out his credit card and buy it, <laughs> acting like Thank customer, you, Brian, by the way. they'll sell it because then they can... That is awesome. So one of the things that separates uh, this Honda store from anyone else in the market is your engagement with the community. So one of the fun things I remember when we first came to know you, a, an enormous pumpkin out mm -hmm. in front of the store, participation in a parade, mm -hmm. a rock band. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, Dan LaBelle behind me that uh, does a great job yeah. of working to help promote some of these things. What's the important when you, uh, Matt, you defined it as getting people to talk about their experience and share it at home. Talk to us about that, the role that community involvement has in that. Well, it's humanizing yourself. You know, everybody wants to know somebody. And the best way to meet people, you know, no one likes to go in a car dealership. Let's call it what it is, you know. Uh, so when we can get out there and introduce ourselves yeah. and invite them back to our home, you know, for a free inspection, complimentary oil change, whatever we got to do to get them back over here. But we're humanizing ourselves by going out there. We're giving back to the community. They see that we're, we're all constantly giving back to all the events uh, and we're out there introducing ourselves. Uh, people feel comfortable. They yeah. come in, they they ask for 
the people like is may here is miguel here is yeah. you know and they ask for us and seeing that and you see how it works and people feel comfortable they see they wave at you they come say hi to you thank you for what you guys did yeah. so when you start hearing all those things you know it works that's that's our biggest success with our grassroots marketing it's just getting people to know us you know what's interesting too about this Lindsay, is as we engage with the community i think about jim craig and the homework assignment we all probably completed in the last week what's the difference between leading and inspiring inspiring when I'm engaged with the community and I see I'm making a difference and I can make a change in the world, not only is that inspiring to the customer because they feel loved, cared about, seen, that's inspiring to me as an employee. Absolutely. Like, how does that make you feel, James, when you have a customer come in and you know that you've supported something important to them, a band, a mm -hmm. parade? A, I don't know why a pumpkin makes such a big deal, mm -hmm. but when I see that pumpkin out in front of the store mm -hmm. as we approach Halloween, mm -hmm. Halloween, Thanksgiving, yeah. whatever, mm -hmm. it's awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. Intrinsically, it makes you feel good. And we talk about fulfillment. People need to feel fulfilled by the work they do as well. So that's a big part of it. Outside of financial remuneration, intrinsic fulfillment based off the work you've done and the impact you've had on others' lives, yeah. it's a, it goes a long way, especially after you know, you're know you done with everything. So it's like uh, in the movie Gladiator, right? Oh, the, what was yes. the quote? What's your favorite quote, Sam? Oh, what we do in life? Echoes, Echoes in, eternity. in eternity. Absolutely. And that's true, right? Facts. There are ripples in the pond, as we always talk about. Speaking yes. about ripples in the pond, we recently had a speaker, a guest speaker as part of Ziegler University, and he challenged us to not only have a ripple in the pond, mm -hmm. but to do it by connecting in ways that inspire us. He actually called it a... Bucket Buck, list. Okay. Right? Bucket so Lindsay bucket actually has a question item. for everybody here. Yes. So <laughs> what is your what is a bucket list item that you have? I would like to go on minimum, minimum of a two-week Alaskan cruise. That was one of mine. That would actually be yes. really cool. Why? Why Alaska? Um, it's you know, I mean, I'm an outdoorsy type of guy. Yeah. And when you think about outdoors, I think Alaska. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of animals, a lot of wildlife there. Yeah. It's like an all natural. Yeah. Um, you know, you're kind of off the grid. You know, yeah. that's a little bit me, you know, so um, that's something I, I would enjoy. That is definitely on my bucket list. Oh, so you want Alaska, to yeah, Alaska is one of the number one spots I want to travel to, actually, yes. on my bucket yeah. list. We need yeah. to get like a, an auto group Alaska cruise. I will tell you, the only thing that's frustrating about going to Alaska on a cruise ship is... You can't it's, lay out the sun. Yeah, oh, yeah. There is no sun. You've got a coat on, but it is cool going by the glaciers. You you would love it. Okay. And I, I've got a funny story about Alaska. So my I didn't ever sell cars, but I was doing eBay and auto alert for a while. And my first customer that I sold a car to was from Alaska and she flew down and drove and she bought like a it was like a 2003 no, she drove it back yes two oh. two door yellow jeep wrangler and she oh, drove no. it all the way back to Alaska and like there wasn't anything else between Alaska and Schaumburg you know and by the way it was the answer great. is probably no yeah that wrangler does not drive uh super uh well does I, it? no James no <laughs> yeah it had been a rough ride back but I'm not like him. Want to be in the woods hunting, <laughs> hunting, <laughs> hunting deer and shooting turkeys. Yep. <laughs> I want to be in one of those commercials where they got the little hut in Fiji. Okay. In the middle, oh. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Left alone. So, all right, Matt Tavikas. Um, being that I'm from Greece, I never had the um the luxury of touring the Mediterranean. Mm. So there's so much history there, and I hear from my family from Greece all the time. Matt, you got to go visit this island. They're like, yeah, 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 one day, one day, one day, and they all have these great stories to tell. Yeah. So eventually, uh, I like to uh, tour the Mediterranean. That's awesome. You just came back from a pretty cool trip in Greece, right? It was it was last July, which was really nice. Uh, I'm thankful uh, for having the opportunity to go back and seeing my family. It was really nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel knowing you've got enough support in this team to be able to do something like that? Oh, it's awesome. It feels great to have that support. And this in the car business, most people don't just walk away for two weeks. No, 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 no. You don't just walk that takes away. A lot. Mm -hmm. No, you need, you, you got to have a team, a solid team behind you for yeah. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, and I'm thankful for that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, mine will be Dubai going back mm -hmm. to Dubai. Um, and this time around, I'm going to go to Abu that. Dhabi. Yeah, I've been there before, but I missed out on Abu Dhabi and I heard uh, it's beautiful out there. So I'd love to go back and try out Abu Dhabi next time. Awesome. Mine was Alaska. Alaska? Yeah, that was that was mine. <laughs> I like that. Oh, no. It came to me. I was thinking about now. I don't know. What is my bucket list? So it doesn't have to be travel. Yeah, I was just going to say, I don't know that it would be travel. Like it would be something um, 
you know, note to editor, cut out the blank space here. Let me think about this real quick. What would it be? What would it something? Gosh, dang it. You know what it was? It would have been like singing in front of a rock star or doing like a real concert. But you've done but that. But we did that with Motley Crue. So <laughs> now that Motley that's Crue? checked off, thank you to Mr. and Ziggler and Ziggler yeah. Auto Group being an Ocean Reef with uh, that was great. Uh, Vince Neal. Yeah. I need really? to come up with a new bucket list item and I will work on that for our next show. How's yes. that for a plan? Okay. That sounds okay. amazing. <laughs> well, instead of a bucket list item, yeah. time or money? Ooh, you know what? Would I rather have time or money? I would 100% rather have time because as I get older, mm -hmm. you learn stuff and you realize that time is so much more valuable with, than money because you can create money. Isn't it interesting? This auto industry we're in is the last great American industry on the face of the planet. When I say that, what, is, what, do you, what does that mean to you, Lindsay? Because almost anybody can come into a dealership and just make and be successful. And make Almost money. anybody, but not everybody. Right. 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 You have what, to be cut out for it. What do you have to have? Thrive, um, passion. You have to be able to be a people person most of the time um, and motivation. And I mean, it can be your own business and you can just excel and do great. Because plenty of people fail at this, Matt, right? Yeah, they do. Uh, you know, my top one also would be work ethic. You mm -hmm. know, you got to have a strong work ethic from this business. Um, but most people that have a strong work ethic in this business achieve great levels in life. So, yeah. Okay. I got a couple questions for you here, almost in kind of a lightning round as we get towards it. Matt, thinking about the prior owner. Mm -hmm. So you're now part of the Ziggler Auto Group. Mm -hmm. And we think about how we become our best selves on the other side of adversity, right? That change was tough. It was. If you had to go back and give advice to your prior owner, whoever that was, <laughs> about how to duplicate the culture you've created, found, enjoyed, grown, flourished with here. What advice would you have given to that person? Invest in your people. Ooh, what do you mean by that? Um, train them. The, exactly what the Ziggler Group is doing. We have speakers every month. Uh, I take more notes than ever in my life. And it, it's shockingly, you don't, I've never heard of some of these speakers. And I'm sort of like, wow, in a wow yeah. factor, I take one or two things away that I could put in my arsenal yeah. to make me a better leader, a better coach. And it's just amazing, you know, so investing in your people uh, to help them grow and grow the, others, the other people around them is uh, the number one thing I would tell them. Yeah. yeah it's all in the people. That's awesome. And almost get outside the auto industry too. I think that's another thing Aaron Ziegler yeah. and the auto group does well. Is most of our learning lessons from outside. Almost all our speakers are not from the, 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 auto, uh, from the auto industry. So, yeah. Yeah. How do you want to be remembered, James King? Now you're not 50 some odd or 60 some odd. You're a young guy, but yes. when you think about the impact or the change you make in the world. Mm -hmm. How would you like to be remembered? I'd love to be remembered as uh, the guy that truly cared for people and uh, also helped inspire a lot of people to be their best self. Because when you're your best self, when you win in life, you win at work. So we try not to separate it here um, at Ziegler Honda. We teach our employees how to win in life. Because when you win in life, you win at work. So I want to be remembered as that guy that encourages people to win in life. Okay. We're going to go all, we're going to go start to finish. We're going to start down here with this one question. Uh, actually, two questions. So I'm going to give you both, and then we'll start with this first one, okay? The first question is going to end up being, what three people, dead or alive, would you like to have dinner with? Oh. And then what's one thing that most people in the auto group just have no idea about you? But let's go with the three people. Actually, you know, let's make it easy. Who's one, per, who's one or two people that you'd like to have dinner with or spend time with, if you could, that you'd learn from? Matt talks about learning from the speakers, right? Not everybody chooses to learn from them, but being able to break bread with someone is extraordinary. That is a question. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, shockingly enough, I would like to have dinner with uh, Ronald Reagan. You know what? He'd be on my list. That's yeah, cool. because yeah. he was known as one of the last great presidents. Yeah, great and communicator. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I myself like jelly beans as well. Yeah. So we would share. Yeah. Um, was also, he M&M's or jelly beans? No, he was jelly beans. Okay. He right. was jelly beans. Right. Um, and then uh, alive, you know, I, I enjoy having dinner with my wife. Yeah. To be honest with you, oh, that's so um, you know nobody that's nobody knows me like she does. Yeah, um, and you can have them real honest, intimate conversations. You can open it up to anything, regardless wow. if it's work, it's you know it's uh, you know family related. I mean, it's just whatever it is. You know, there's conversations there that can be had, and they're they're honest. 
You and know that, what? And that's important to me. Every time I have a conversation with this team here, Matt, I blame you for this. I always end up, I always get on something that like, where it's like, this is my own personal shortcoming, right? Because <laughs> to my wife, I wouldn't have listed that right out the gate, but I need to be at that point, right? My problem is I travel too much. That is beautiful that you're inspired by that opportunity. Absolutely. That Thank you. You find that opportunity to have such a rich conversation. That mm. That's uh, that's inspiring. Ozzy Osbourne. I'm a very big Ozzy Osbourne oh, fan. Oh, a little, little bit of crazy <laughs> training. There you go. I don't know. Ladies, there you go. What would you ask Ozzy Osbourne? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> you just, just shoot the chance. Hang out. Have a You may not, you may not <laughs> understand what he's saying. Yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> and then my father. My father passed away three, four years ago. And it's just, you know. That's beautiful. Took a while. He was sick for a while. So just, but. You could ask your dad one thing. What would you ask? Well, that's a hard one. Yeah. You know, see if you're proud of me, but they know I knew that to begin yeah. with. But yeah. it's just like, you know, well, guess what? What did I? I could anything else that. I could do better. Yeah. Or, yeah. or he would probably tell me stuff like, in those grounds because he always pushed me. Yeah. Just, made me the person I am. So. So I think Matt Tavikas is GM of the store could have put his arm around you and tell you the answer to is he proud of you? Right. Oh, I'm very. No, no, I, I can go. I can give you stories about about Victor here. <laughs> uh, we almost lost him at one point, and he's still <laughs> and he's still with us. Yeah. So yeah, and I'm very proud of him. Yeah. Very proud of him. Yeah. Who's someone you'd you'd uh, want to? You know, people? the more I think about it, you know, only because I love Greek history, I would say Alexander the Great. You know, conquering the world known to man. I would love to see because he was a young man when he started. What his thoughts were and everything else. Someone alive. I'm always intrigued by Musk. Um, oh yeah. And his thought yeah. process and. Why? We almost got him on our podcast, Doug. That wow, was like a that, year and a half ago, and it kind of was going to happen, and it didn't happen, and it just makes me mad. Yeah, that's one person I would love to sit and pick his brain. I'm sure I'd lose him after five minutes, but you know what? I don't think so. Maybe not. He's pretty, he seems yeah. pretty down to earth, but yeah. crazy, crazy. Right? Oh, great. Yeah, we'll have would, to sit down at dinner. Would you, on that topic, dinner or breaking bread with you means a little something different than your traditional American because your Greek background. Yes. What what does mealtime mean to you, and how is it different when when you think about bonding with people? And, oh man, <laughs> uh, I just oh, came shit. back my it's physical today, <laughs> so um, yeah, no, uh, I got to watch my cholesterol levels. Uh, we like to eat, obviously, you know, the Mediterranean diet should be yeah. healthy, but it's we mix healthy. we mix it in with a bunch of everything else in America. Yeah. We have our nice steaks and everything else. Wine, always wine. You know, people used to look at me differently when I even had my kids at the dinner table having wine with us. And they're like, Matt, your kid's only 15. I'm like, yeah, but you know what? Today he's 21, doesn't drink. Yeah. Uh, and not that he was getting drunk, but you never take anything away from your children. Yeah. At the dinner table, we're open. We have discussions. We have a glass of wine. We break bread. We talk. And we yeah. eat. We definitely eat. You know, it's interesting. That's something we do in the auto group, right? We take time to get together, whether yes, it's a, a celebration dinner or whether it's as a collection of GMs and talking. And yes, we do. There's so much bonding that happens in that place. So Always. James, Always. James King, who would you talk to? Um, mine will be Jerome Powell. He's the Fed chairman. Uh, you say, just, what the heck? Yeah, I know. What the heck is going on with FFR rates, right? It's affecting us with nominal rates. So I, I'm, I'm very uh, versed with monetary policies. He knows a lot about it. Um, so I'd love to ask him a lot of questions about monetary policies and how it affects the macroeconomic system. Okay. My first one, don't judge me for, but it's Kim Kardashian. Ooh. Oh, and, <laughs> well, we are going to ask a lot. Because, <laughs> yes, because... No, I think she's incredibly smart and I'm actually very like intrigued by her. Yes. I mean, she is probably one of the hardest working people if yeah. you really dig into what she does on a daily basis and she really does try to help people. And I think with how much success she's had, um, she gives back a lot and just trying to be a lawyer. And, you know, I just I'm very like intrigued by her and how much she works and does. And I just be interested to pick her brain. That's a great answer. James King um, would drive you to the dinner. on that. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> my pleasure. Um, and then the second one, I think it would be my grandpa. He died when I was young and I would just love to sit and have dinner with him again and just yeah. talk about the world and everything I've done. And, and what, just, would you ask? what would the question be? I don't know if I would ask, I just, anything, it would just be, yeah, I just would want to hear like his perspective on things because he yeah. was just very intelligent and he was probably one of the nicest people I ever met. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just think it'd be interesting to hear his perspective on the world today. That's beautiful. Yeah. So my answer is far less interesting than all of yours. I would pick two people for the same dinner. It'd be both presidential candidates for the upcoming <laughs> race. And I would get them both together and I would say, what the heck, right? <laughs> I'd be like... <laughs> Get it together for crying out loud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't understand in the world of politics today why we can 
work so hard to execute at such a high level in business and be so successful. And yet politics and world social affairs and global affairs can be such a disaster. So, um, all right, let's start here on something, Lindsay, something most people don't know about you. This is getting tougher for you and I. Oh my gosh, it is. (laughs) Um, uh, can I skip and come back? Yep, you can skip and yep. come back because you and I are I almost know. out of them. We've been going through it every week, James. Everybody knows everything. <laughs> yeah, something no one knows about me. Um, I played professional soccer for a long time. Oh, where'd you play? Yeah, I played. It was a team in Nigeria called FC Barcelona. So I was a striker. Yes. Yeah, so I've got an execution mindset. Uh, Cause I was a striker for almost 10 years and that's all I knew was execution. So do you like I, Ted Lasso? Do you watch Ted Lasso? Abs- absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. Were you, uh, what was the guy's name? Uh, uh, who's the, who's the star player that just left the team? What, it's okay. No, no, no. But so, yeah. so you play professional. Soccer. Yes. I play professional soccer and I got injured, but I was a striker. So anyone that knows about soccer on the same, the striker is the guy that scores. Score. The, yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. So yeah. your only job is to score. That's yeah. it. So you're very aggressive. Awesome. That's awesome. What's one thing that you have taken from your soccer background to help you be excellent in this business? Execution. Yeah. So Matt has to remind me to humanize myself because I get very serious about execution. By all means, we have to accomplish our goals. That gives me chills just hearing it. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, there is no there is no doubt when he says that. So all right, Matt, one thing most people don't know. Well, I you know, I had a I owned a restaurant for five years. Six years of my life, uh, from uh, 23 to almost 29, before I got, right before I got in the car business. Mm-hmm. And once we sold the restaurant, I got in the car business at, at that age and never looked back. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. So eating has a, or eating, old, cooking, old time. Cooking for me is, it's a is, is one of my happiness. Yeah, yeah. It's, my happy, it's my happy spot. That's why I like to cook my uh, my coworkers here all the time. Uh, in the summertime. I'm coming next time. Victor, what you, what you got for us? Really into live music. Mm-hmm. I love, I, love I love seeing live music. Doesn't matter what kind of music. Yeah, I've seen plenty of concerts. Uh, yeah. My family has a band, and they they travel around locally and stuff. What kind of music that. do they play? Um, everything blues, rock, metal, it's country. Awesome. You know, it's like it's my brother in law. He's the he's the drummer. My nephew's the guitarist. My sister in law is the singer, and then. The basis is Uncle Bob. He's no relation. We call him Uncle yeah. Bob, but they play all over. Yeah. Um, what's it called? Yeah. So. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Last up. <laughs> um, something that I'm uh, proud of is I bought my first house when I was 19 years old. That's nice. cool. So that, was, that was a learning experience, but that kind of set me up for yeah. later on in life, you know. So yeah. that, that's by the way, with inflation now, that was that. a pretty good decision way back when, yeah. no matter what it was. Absolutely. Right? Like, Absolutely. Uh, it was yes. good to get into. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so, hey, on behalf of the entire Ziegler Auto Group, it's exciting to congratulate you as a representative of the store in the Wisconsin market for achieving the Ziegler Auto Group's Best and Brightest Award and Recognition. You truly embody what it means at Team Ziegler to be excellent, to be among the best and the brightest. And we're just super thrilled to be here today to be able to acknowledge you for that and to be able to uh, pass this recognition on to you. Uh, Matt, any any thoughts? Uh, any thoughts? Cl- any closing thoughts for you? And then we'll let Lindsay wrap us up. Uh, the only thing I could um, share with everybody in the group is, you know, um, people say they're passionate. Um, and and it's one thing to say, and it's, it, I always tell people, um, let your actions speak for your words. Don't just say things. Let your actions speak for your words. So um, if you're going to say something, make sure don't say it. Just go and do it. You know, uh, we, say, we want to lead by example. You know, go compliment a coworker today. Just go out of your way and go make someone smile. Go pat someone on their back. You know, be the be the uh, example of what you know Ziggler's all about, and um, and just treat people as you want to be, how you want to be treated. Yeah, I mean, I'm just super proud to be a part of this team, and it's been really cool to one see James go from Chrysler. I saw his yeah. whole career at Chrysler, and that and he was amazing the entire time. Um, and then to see him succeed here at Honda with this team, and and to be a part of you know, the acquisition when we acquired um, the Honda store here and to see them be the number one store in the group has been really exciting. And when we acquired this store, they said, you know, we'll be number one in no time. And I thought, okay, great, cool. You know, but they, they did it and I on the prize and been uh, going ever since. Yeah. It's been great to see. And saying something and delivering is integrity. Very much saying so. something and not is cool. You guys said it. And you've done it. Congratulations. Thank Thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you.
Hello, listener family. We are here today coming at you from Maryville, Indiana at our Team Ziegler Subaru store. And we're gonna talk about a very special program. You know, we're all about giving back to our community at Team Ziegler. We're all about our customer excellence. We're all about making a ripple in the pond, right? And that effect we can have within our community and our world-class culture. So we're gonna to talk to you about a special thing that we just did today. Kyle, do you wanna tell us about? Absolutely. So, um, hey Team Ziegler. So yeah, we uh, we actually uh, got two, four, six of us here, the 75 people that were uh, at our dealership today, 75 plus probably, to celebrate our third year of uh, Share the Love event check presentation, which we've supported between Subaru and, and Ziegler. We've supported Chasing Dreams for the last three years. This was our biggest year yet, and it's only going to get better with uh, the new building coming and everything there. So to my right, I have Chad um, with Subaru. Um, I have Denise and Liz, who are with Chasing Dreams. Uh, Dan Brubaker, who is my general sales manager, and then obviously we got our host here, Mike Van Ryan. So today was an outstanding day. I mean, it, not just the weather was good. We got lucky there. Um, it's such a good turnout. It was actually the best turnout we've had yet. And to just to see the interactions out there and with all the parents and everything, it was it was awesome. So it was a very, very good day today. Um, we did the check presentation and then just to, for what we do to give back to the community and, and Subaru's vision aligns directly with ours, not from a store level, from but from an organizational standpoint. And, you know, the ability for us to even do this and to come in and see the kids and, you know, everybody that helps with, with that, it's, it's really just a good feeling. And it comes full circle when you look at some of our customers out there that see what we're actually doing. And at the end of the day, it's, it's taking care of our customers and also supporting our community to the best of our ability. So with that, I want to turn it over to Chad. Um, from a Subaru standpoint, Chad's been great for us. He's how many, how many years with Subaru? Uh, it'll be 30 years in November. There we go. Sure. So Chad, what does it mean to you to be you know, part of something like this today? And you, you've obviously been doing this longer yeah. than I have. So. Yeah. The Share the Love program is really pretty spectacular. Uh, basically, Subaru kind of came up with this idea for us to help charitable organizations in, in really on a national basis when we put the program into existence about 15 years ago. But I think it was our fourth or fifth year uh, that we were doing the program that we realized it'd be real good to try and drive it down to the local level, not so much just national charity levels, but actually allow each retailer across the country to select at least one and in some cases two local charities. And basically how the funds are accrued for any individual retailer. So basically we start the program in mid-November, it runs to the end of the year. Initially every vehicle that was sold, Subaru would donate $250 and then that money would go to the charity. Over the years, we've expanded that a little bit where now it's not only vehicle sales, but we're including uh, oil changes or maintenances when customers come in. So we've got service departments involved in it. So we've really seen it take off as a program. Like I said, I think it was technically eight years ago when we allowed the retailers to select local uh, organizations. That's where the community really can get involved at a grassroots level, like the Ziegler team and so many other Subaru retailers across the country. They're seeing it and participating with their local community and it's making a huge difference. So that's, that's what we love about it. And I can tell you, I call on a number of stores here in the area and my favorite part of the year is to go out and, and do these check presentations to see the, the local people and the recipients see those funds. And oftentimes the funds are uh, hopefully a little bigger than they were expecting. And it, it's a really nice surprise. And not only is the Share the Love event a big, big mm -hmm. probably the biggest event of our, our year, it, but it is. with the other five pillars with the Love Promise, Denise, you guys share the same values when it comes to the different pillars. Like a couple weeks ago, we did uh, an Earth Day where we planted some trees and things like that. So what we plan to do going forward is how can we get involved with you know the things that you guys are doing, which they align with exactly what we're doing throughout the year, um, and we can get more involvement um, with the intimate relationship that we have with you guys. We're excited about doing that this year and, and, and things of that nature. So with that, Denise, uh, let me hand it over to you. And, and what, is this, what does this all mean to you? I know we've been doing this for a couple years now. Yeah. We've got a great relationship going, and we look forward to many, many more years. But go ahead. Well, we look forward to partnering more with you also with you know education based food you know helping feed the community more we're doing a community garden which everybody's excited about <laughs> oh, we are ecstatic <laughs> so a lot of your pillars yes are definitely our pillars yeah. i mean we want to see positive change in our community the most important thing and i have to say today 
we've never felt so much love. I, it is just unbelievable, you know, how you guys make the community feel. I, I can't believe all the shares and I, the kids today in our class were mm -hmm. so excited to come here. Mm -hmm. It's not about a check presentation. Right. It's about your commitment to them and their future because you guys truly have made a commitment to make a change mm -hmm. in not only people's lives, but the community. Absolutely. That's huge. Mm -hmm. yep. For our listeners mm -hmm. and our viewers out there that weren't able to be part of it today, what did it look like? You know, I saw a lot of smiles. I saw a lot of laughs with the kids. Mm -hmm. and a lot of hugs. A lot of, young, a lot of hugs. Yeah. You know? yeah. one, of the, one of the young ladies, very courageous, and she stepped stepped out and read a poem. Yeah. So that yeah. was really neat. But yeah. talk to us about what that check presentation looked like and what it felt like. Wow. Honestly, it was overwhelming, but in a good way. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, just the support, it's just incredible. It definitely is going to make a huge change. And the kids knew it. Yeah. I mean, the kids felt that embrace. Yeah. It was unbelievable. The one gal that read the poem, I mean, it was so fitting. Because anybody yeah. can say thank you. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, how it really makes you feel mm, and, and it was. expressing yeah, that. It yeah, was. It, it was unbelievable. Yeah. It's like, wow, she hit it right on the nose. And no, I didn't pick that poem. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she was the one that did it. And, and that, I was that shocked. That made the whole it. deal go full yeah. circle. That really yeah. kept it. That was good. So, I mean, just yeah, listening to, to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was like, wow. But it was a huge celebration today. It yeah. was. Yeah. I mean, if you've noticed, the kids were like, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're and, excited. Yeah. Oh yeah. And the comfortability mm -hmm. level is, is starting to the more that we see each other, the better oh, yeah. the, you know. No, that is oh, yeah. it's so second nature to them now. You know, I, yeah. I mean it has grown yeah. and grown and grown, you know, throughout the years mm -hmm. or whatnot. But the way that they feel now, as with Michael, you know, with my mm -hmm. son, I, and when he brings it up when it gets brought up in class, hey guys, guess where we're going today? You know, we're going over to Ziegler. Oh, you know, I mean yeah. the excitement. Oh, yeah. Because this is our neighbor. You guys are our neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you are not, you know, we're going over to a business. We're going over, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. Or whatnot. Yeah. You're our, yeah, that's exactly what it is. You are our friends and you're our neighbor. Yeah. And that's how they feel. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how we feel. Yeah. And um, because it has become so second nature. And of course, it, which is obviously such a blessing, you know, that we came for a check presentation today. And they know it's obviously going to be such a tremendous, you know, benefit yeah. or whatnot for everybody in the community. Um, but... We were coming over here to spend time with you yes. also. So they love being able to, you know, yeah. make things for you to bring mm -hmm. over here and so on and so forth, you know, because it is truly from the bottom of their heart. Yeah. Yeah. It's from the bottom of our hearts. Yeah. Well, thank you. And we did the trunk or treat. We uh, yes, decorated that was, uh, yeah. Christmas cookies. Yeah. And yep. those are the cool things that we do throughout the year based on whatever holidays are coming yeah. up. And mm -hmm. we'll continue to do that kind of stuff. So with Dan, Dan has been with us for t t eight months, 10 months, mm -hmm. something like that. So Dan, what does this mean to you being part of not only just Ziggler, but seeing what we're doing in, in really your local community that you, yeah. you've grown up in. Having having the ability to give uh, is one thing, but ultimately to be able to be a partner with a, a great organization, not only with Subaru, but ultimately Chasing Dreams uh, and making an impact on this area. A lot of times we share, you know, how many cars we sold or, you know, you know, the, all these all these numbers, but it's not the it's not about the cars that are being sold. It's about the impact that we're making in, in the community, uh, the impact that we're making, uh, the ability that we're able to make the impact on, uh, in their lives. But to to sit here on my first share love event of the check presentation on this area, they talk about the giving that we gave of, of a check, but it was more rewarding for us to see the the, the faces of, of, of all the kids, how they interacted with us, uh, watch McKenzie go around and ask everyone, you know, what their names are, what, what birth it is, what date is, you know, on this area, you know. And, uh, uh, one one guy, uh, you know, birthday's next Thursday, and she's like, "Oh, your birthday's next Thursday," and he's like, "You literally pull out his phone because it is next Thursday." You know? So you know, just to see the involvement of them, but the, you know, ultimately the comfort level that that, that they have. But you know, moving forward as far as the partnership that we're going to have, it's going to be a lot stronger. You know, uh, being able to support that, uh, you know, them, and as they continue to grow, so they got the community garden that's coming up at the end of this month. They are going to do a camp, which is going to be a huge undertaking of this area. We're going to try to support as much as we can. Uh, they do need uh, uh, great volunteers to go support that, uh, that three-day camp. Uh, but, you know, yeah. to be able to send kids at no cost uh, to a camp that's an overnight camp and, and be able to give them the what it truly feels like to be a regular kid uh, uh, on this area yeah. is, is so so impactful. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys for the, for the opportunity uh, to, to partner with you guys. And uh, um, it, it was a great day. 
Yes, it was. Yeah, it was wonderful. And we can't forget about who makes it all possible, which is which is who's on the front line out there every day. Our sales yes. team, our parts team, our service team, our office team. It, it just wouldn't be possible without them. So thank you to uh, everybody out there that's putting in the work. This is the fruits of our labor and what, mm -hmm. what we're doing day in and day out. Um, so that I'm grateful for the team that we have and we keep moving forward. So yeah, well said, mm -hmm. Kyle. And you and your team, you want to share the dollar amount that you and your team raised with uh, Subaru as a Go ahead. What was it last year? Remember? <laughs> I don't even remember. 20. <laughs> it was, was 25,000. Yeah. yeah. And this year was 28. 28,000 even. even. We rounded up Thank for you. it. Oh, yeah. There you go. Go. Good. I was going to say, need some change. I'm not sure. But no, that's. <laughs> I was passed out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After the kids were going around asking me, they're like, Liz, Liz, Liz. They like, put one too many. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. It was, it was more than last year. I said, yes, no, it was. They yeah. put one too many yeah. zeros in there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, well, look, it's our pleasure. It seriously is. And when you guys come around, we get just as excited as you do. And, you know, for us to be able to collaborate on things like this, and, you know, we look forward to many, many more. So We do, too. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Lastly, why our kids love to come here? They walk in this door and they can feel the love. Yeah. There you go. That's we well appreciate said. That. Yeah. 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 We like to think we have a world class do. culture, whoever walks you through do. that door. Mm -hmm. so. you, you honestly do. Yeah. 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 Okay. And our yeah. kids are really good character, judge of character. Oh, they are. Yeah. They they are. They are. are. The truth, they truly really are. Every time. They don't do it up at all for yeah. anybody. Yeah. That's so for I sure. thank you well, thank for sharing who you guys are with us. I mean, it's, yeah, it's incredible. Well said. That's great. Well, well, Kyle and uh, Chad, on behalf of uh, Team Ziggler, appreciate all that you guys do with your teams and, and uh, just amazing impact today. And if some of our viewers, listeners out there are wondering how can they get involved with their local communities, just, just do something, right? Just start. And it always comes back around to you. So look for someone you can help out, look for someone you can get to. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A big thanks to teams at Ziegler Honda of Racine, Subaru Merrillville, as well as Lindsay Latsko and Mike Van Ryan for contributing to this week's episode. Until next week, how are you driving vision today? <laughs> <laughs>